Well, welcome to another beautiful day here for an adventure on Tommy Travels the Second. It is very echoey in this building here at the Dakota County Historical Society in South St. Paul. I am the only one in here <laughs> at the moment. But uh, it is five degrees outside and the wind chill is well below zero. So I thought it'd be a good day for an indoor adventure. And so they've got this great World War I exhibit that we are gonna check out today. If you are brand new to this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on a thing. And you guys, come on with me. Let's go see what there is to see. And there's the museum entrance and then as you come in you'll see it's a big huge warehouse of all sorts of things on World War One and then they have a cool mural on the wall of Dakota County but what I really love is they have a mural on the floor of Dakota County as well so you can uh, walk on the floor and travel right up through Dakota County and here they have the Lakeville and Farmington areas and then further up north here as we travel we hit Apple Valley which is right where I went to school graduated from Apple Valley there's 35W and here's Burnsville right over here <laughs> that is awesome and when we moved here to Burnsville I lived right right around right around there <laughs> And they have these display cases of old army helmets from World War I and uniforms. And these aren't just, hey, this is what a uniform looked like. These are of actual veterans' uniforms that were donated by the family. And this person, he is George Shirley, born February 11th, 1894, on a farm in Eureka Township right here in Dakota County. And... I'm not going to have time to read everyone's entire history, but he is an actual veteran of World War I. And that is the uniform that he wore. It's kind of a surreal experience to be <laughs> looking at that right now. And here's a picture of what a Red Cross uniform would have looked like all the way back in 1918. That is Flora Fryer, a picture of her wearing the Red Cross for which she was paid $70 per month. And she graduated from a two-year course at Lotto Hospital Training School in Hastings. So you've heard people say, I'm just working hard down here in the trenches. And I always picture sandbags like this and then just a ditch right behind it. But over time, trenches got a little more advanced where they put uh, wooden boards and structures to create seating for soldiers to be able to get some rest and sleep and eat some meals and then even fight back. And you can see this guy over here trying to get some shut eye in all of that commotion going on and they have that represented here as well. You can see the opening and there would have been a cover over that or a little curtain and then back here someone would have had a place to get some shut eye if they needed it. I think peaceful and restful sleep, though, was not a thing back then. And a lot of World War I was financed through savings bonds. It was a big thing that was promoted to Americans, and they have some posters depicting some of those advertisements. Our daddy is fighting at the front for you. Back him up. Buy a United States government bond of the second Liberty Loan of 1917. Unbelievable, over a hundred years ago. So this is all World War I history over here. And then in this area is more history of Dakota County itself. Usually you hear about celebrations of the end of prohibition, but here's an advertisement encouraging it. You can see a saloon back there in the background. Uh, this husband and wife with a baby right here. And there's a guy representing the saloon, <laughs> inherited, appetite for liquor. 
And then it says, 36 states can stop this by constitutional amendment. And that is just what happened. And when that happened, this happened. <laughs> People said, okay, we can't go to the saloon anymore. We're just going to make our own. So they have a little still right here to see. They've even got a blacksmith shop in here with the bellows stoking the fire. And this is the forge is what it's called. And look at that old drill press. There is nothing electric about that thing. So they have old shops back here, a big balcony. And what Tommy Travels the Second Adventure would be complete without a Peanuts character. <laughs> This is Linus Van Pelt, and he is a medicine show pitch man. <laughs> Hello, Linus. <laughs> Looks like you've got some snake oil to sell me. <laughs> well, not today, my friend. Not today. Look at this old-timey store we have walked into from back in those days with the tools on the wall over there. A barrel of... We're just going to say that was root beer. <laughs> and then authentic products from the time like saltine crackers. <laughs> and even an authentic old cash register to ring it all up. And this is great. They've got an old barber shop over here. Look, they've got the chair with the mirror in there and all of the products and everything that the barber uses. They've got a doctor's office over here. That looks like a comfortable chair to sit in. You know what doesn't look like a comfortable chair to sit in? <laughs> this one right over here. The old dentist chair. Oh my gosh. Yep. <laughs> this is when dentistry was a very painful ordeal, it looks like. And look at those little teeth on the counter there. And now that we've learned all about Dakota County, they even have a little spot back here where you can sit down on the bench, enjoy the nature tree that they have right here, and then you can look out the windows at the beauty of Dakota County. And there it is, right there. Beautiful day. Very cold, but very beautiful. Well, you guys, this has been another successful adventure here on Tommy Travels the Second. And now it's time for me to get back to work here in the old blacksmith shop. And if you guys liked what you saw here today, go ahead and hit like on my YouTube channel. While you're at it, go ahead and hit subscribe and the little bell notification next to it so you can be the first to know when a new adventure comes out. And this has been an absolute blast here at the Dakota County Historical Society. Thank you guys so much for the support that you've given me so far. And I hope to catch you on the flip side.